morning guys. I'm so excited to paint with you today. So for this project we're going to be using a piece of paper out of our mixed media sketchbooks. You can go ahead and open that up. Take out the piece that you're going to be working on and you can put the sketchbook back in your supply bin. We will be working with our flat brushes large, medium, and small. And we need to have a plate for our paints, a stir stick, and all of our paint colors. So, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is give ourselves some guidelines, some little circles to help us portion out our paints and this time you're going to do six um, circles because we're going to use six different colors. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Now we are going to set up our paint palette based on the color wheel, which means that we are going to um, be thoughtful of how the colors are laid out. So our color wheel, if we had red at the top, which is a primary color, and then if we had yellow and blue, also primary colors, then green would go between yellow and blue, it is called a secondary color. And if you mix red and blue, you will get green. So we're going to set these up um, in the same way on our palette. So we're going to be doing blue, green, and yellow. Now red is going to be kind of interesting because if you mix red with blue, you get purple. And if you mix red with yellow, you get orange. We are going to put it over here on the orange side, and then we will have room for black and white. So, the important thing is to know that you can always add additional paint. So, um, because we're going to have a number of art projects after today, we don't want to use all of our paint. Um, you can always add more if you need it. So, do pay attention to how much paint goes in the circles and don't put more paint in there than is suggested because I don't want you to run out of paint before we run out of projects. So we can start with the yellow and we're just gonna put literally a little tiny blob. Do you see how the size of the circle relates to the size of the blob? Remember, we can always add more. Same with the red. Okay. The green. It's basically the least amount that I can squeeze out. Ooh, that is satisfying. Okay. And we're going to use some black. and some white. There we go. Okay, so we are doing a project which is inspired by the Tree of Life, a very famous painting by Klimt. And um, this is the going to be um, a tree. And so we're going to start with the background. Generally, you start with the background and then move your way forward and layer on top of it. So we are going to set these aside for right now uh, because they are going to be our leaves and our tree. When we build a painting in acrylics, we generally start from the back and work our way forward. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to start with our background. Now we've already gotten paints ready for the tree and the leaves. We're going to leave those over here. Anyway, um, we're going to start with the, with the white, titanium white acrylic. 
and we're going to just put it directly onto our paper. I'm going to make one, two, these are not huge, four little blobs. And then we're going to come down and do three little blobs. And then we're going to come down and do three littler blobs. We're going to add a little bit of yellow in here. We're just putting it directly on to our paper because it's super easy to do. Ooh, do that. That was bigger than I expected, but you know, whatevs. We're just gonna go with it. And way down at the bottom, we're going to put just a little bit of blue. Now blue is really a strong color. So don't, oops, don't overdo it. That's like so much more than I intended, but hey, whatever, we're going with it. Now we're gonna take our big flat brush. We're going to start at the top and we're going to take the white and just move it back around in horizontal lines and horizontal strokes and work our way down. Now we did two or three rows of white so that we could um, have most of our color down at the bottom. And as I come down, I'm kind of working it back up just a little bit and then down at the bottom in order to get a nice smooth gradient. My goal, as much as I can, is to try to um, get the top to be uh, white and then kind of into an ivory color and then down into a stronger yellow and then down at the bottom I'm gonna let that blue blend with my yellow and form a green. Now I am gonna take this up just a little bit but not too much. There we go. Don't worry about things like this um, it's in the background, it's okay, it's fine. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now, this brush we're going to set aside, but we wanna make sure and remember that we are going to wash it so that it does not dry like this. If it dries like this and acrylics tend to really firm up, then we might end up ruining the brush and then we wouldn't have it for the next project. So we'll put it aside for right now try to find your smallest round brush. It is probably a number two, and you can check that by looking um, on the handle of your brush, and if it says number two, then that is probably pretty good. The numbers get bigger as the brush head gets bigger. So we can see that in this case, I have a two, I have a six, I have an eight, and as the numbers get bigger, the brush heads get bigger. I'm just going to stick with my smallest brush right now. That's going to help me get a thin um, branch. So as the background is drying, I can continue to work on the front of it. Um, and I'm going to be developing my tree and my branches. And the thing that's most important to remember is that a tree is thicker at the center of the trunk. And then as it, the limbs grow and get further from the trunk, those tree limbs get thinner and thinner and thinner. It's kind of like my hand, where um, toward my body, uh, my hand is bigger and then further away from my body, my fingers get smaller and they taper smaller and smaller and smaller. And that is how we grow and that is also how trees grow. So I'm going to keep that in mind. And you could start at the trunk or you could start at the edge of the branches. For me, because it's easier to, I'm going to start at the outermost thinnest branches. Now, in your sketchbook or or in your place or someplace, if you wanna practice this, it's really a good idea. Take your brush 
and just try to make a thin line with your brush. It might take some practice. Now you'll notice that if you keep just using the tip of your brush, your lines will be very thin. If you press down, then your lines will get substantially thicker. I made these two lines using the exact same brush, right? So since we're trying to get um, a tree that is thinner at the end and then thicker as it goes toward the trunk, then you might try making some thin to thick lines and you're going to be doing some curves so you might even try doing some thin to thick lines like so and it gets thicker by pressing down so thin you're just holding the tip of your brush and then as you press down it gets thick thinner and thicker and thinner and thicker okay so kind of keep that in mind we're going to pick up some black and we're going to start out here and we're going to, it's easiest if you hold your brush up so that it is perpendicular to your paper. And also keep in mind that the bigger glob that you have paint on your brush, it's going to be really hard to make that thin. So go ahead and wipe off that paint and then just put paint on the tip of your brush. Okay, no big blobs on our brush, just on the tip. All right, so I'm gonna start out here and I'm going to make a line that is curved and it starts from the ass side and then it comes down like so. I'm gonna do another one. Like so, I'm gonna do another one. Now I'm pushing down harder as I come toward my trunk, where my trunk is going to be. I'm pushing down harder in order to get a thicker line. I'm gonna start up here. Maybe I start and do like a curly cue and then I press hard coming down. Maybe I come here and do a curly cue and then press hard. We're doing a stylized tree because that is what Klimt did. Maybe this one starts low and then comes back up. Maybe there's another one that does something like that. Maybe this one does something like that. Maybe this one curves in, something like that. I'm gonna fill in the middle of my trunk, like so. Now my trunk is going to end in roots and those roots are going to come out like so and maybe they have curly ends also. So that's looking pretty good. And if yours looks different from mine, that is okay because all trees look different. Now I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna look at every one of these 
branches. And I'm going to make sure that at the very end is thin and then it gets thicker as it goes toward the main trunk. So I can see that this one it doesn't thicken up quite as much as the ones that I like better. So very slowly, I'm going to come back in here and thicken it up until it reaches the, the trunk of the tree. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Maybe I want this one to be a little bit thicker, like so. Maybe I need a little curly cue at the end, something like that. Maybe I need a little curly cue here. Maybe this one starts here. And we're just having fun. Just having a good time. Now, there's a this branch has two um, limb or this limb has two branches coming off of it. This has two, and this has two, and I like how that's looking. So. I might go ahead and add some limbs, some extra branches. And just make sure that your branches continue to get thicker as they come toward the trunk. Oops. So that's working pretty well. I think that's a neat looking tree. I'm feeling pretty good about them. Now the black is a really strong color, and if we were to uh, paint up next to it, um, it might, uh, you know, it might blend into our other colors that we're going to be using for the branches. But um, it doesn't really bother me that much, so I think we can get away with uh, with working with it. Now we're going to be using our middle sized flat brush and our little flat brush. So again, the, the bigger the number, the bigger the flat brush, and uh, just like your round brushes. So we're going to start with the middle sized brush and we're going to pick up some color. This part is really up to you. If, for instance, uh, you want to follow me and basically do what I do, that is great. And if you want to pick other colors, that's fine too. What we're going to be doing is that we're going to be making, um, instead of leaves, we're going to be actually be making circles. So again, stylized. And for instance, if I wanted to start with a yellow, I can put down my brush and I can spin it. Look at that. I'm not even moving it. I'm just twisting. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so satisfying. I'm just twisting it and it makes a great looking circle. And that is going to be one of three circles that I make for my stylized leaves. Okay, so I'm going to pick some colors um, it's easier to start with the lighter color, so I'm going to be using um, some yellow, and I'm just going to spin it so that it makes a circle. And 
do so here, there, and everywhere. And you might think, whoa, Miss Thomas, I don't know that yellow on top of yellow is going to show up and it will be there, it will be fainter, that is for sure. Uh, but depending on how much white you have in there, uh, you might be able to see it. And I don't mind that it's a little more subtle in some areas. Now yellow is a pretty uh, weak color in that um, on top of the area that's greenish or bluish, it will definitely be hard to see that. And I'm gonna show you a little bit later what you can do in order to make it a little bit stronger. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and show it to you now. So you can pick up a little bit of your white. Your titanium white is a bit stronger and more opaque and you can blend in with your yellow and then make your circles. And that is a good alternative if you're wanting to um, be able to see your yellow, your light yellows a little bit better on those darker colors, then that is one way of making them a little bit more visible. Now, maybe I don't want all of my big circles to be white or yellow. And so maybe I want to have some orange in there. Well, a little bit of red mixed with some yellow is going to give you a beautiful orange. Now remember, you don't need to blend you don't need to mix up the entire amount of red and yellow. You want to keep some clear yellow and some red unmixed, but you can mix them together and make some orange. Now, when you mix, you might end up with a big old clump of paint on your brush like that. So you want to try to wipe that so that you don't have that big clump and then just pick it up on the tip. And then you can make, and this orange is actually looking very gold to me, which is just okay with me because uh, Klimt used a lot of gold in his paintings, a lot of gold. Okay. Loving that. And don't you love this twist technique? Ugh, I love it. It's awesome. So I am basically going to fill most of my background with these big circles. Now maybe I want to have another color um, as some of my background circles. So maybe I want to do 
something that has, ooh, look at that. You can even come off to the side and then do your circles. Ooh, I love that, guys. Look at that. Isn't that neat? So that it looks like your tree is just going right off of your paper. Loving it, loving it. Okay, so I can just wipe off most of my paint. And now I'm going to um, try to get kind of a light green. Now this is a very strong, very dark green. And so a little bit of that green mixed with some yellow is going to give me a lighter, limier green. And I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm going to come up here now and, ooh, I might even add a little more yellow. That is really strong. And I might add just a little bit of white to, to lighten it. I'm trying to go for more like a limey green instead of that really strong green. Okay, let's see if I like that better. Ooh, I do, I do, I do. Okay, liking it, liking it. Now you might decide that you like colors that are a little different from mine. That is okay, because we are different people. We will have different projects. Doing my twist technique, using my flat brush, loving it, loving it. I don't even mind if those overlap a little bit. Okay. Mm. Looking good, friends. Now, maybe I'll come in here. So I want this tree to look really full with lots of these circles that represent leaves. Twist to the left, twist to the right. Stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. Okay, I still might end up coming in here with more, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this aside. And I'm going to pick up my small brush and uh, Oops, not that one. My small um, flat brush. Don't think I've used it yet, good. And I'm going to start layering on top of this a smaller circle inside the bigger circle using the same technique and whatever colors I get excited about. I kind of like the analogous yellow, orange, green, how that's looking. So I might just do stronger versions of those colors. So I'm going to take a little bit more of my strong green and maybe um, add a little bit of yellow, but allow it to be a little bit stronger. And again, I'm going to do my press and rotate so that I'm making a circle inside of the circle. Like that. Press 
press and rotate. And maybe I want to have a little blue get in on the action, a little bit of blue-green. I'm not hating it, guys. I'm not hating it. See that blob? Too much paint. Wipe it off. And then tip your bristles. Now, there's nothing wrong with using a little bit of red, too. So if you want to pick up a little bit of red. You can do that. Just like that. And we are almost done with our leaves. They kind of look like flowers. Now, we're going to do one more layer inside the middle of all of these. So we have three circles in total. And again, you can uh, decide what colors you want to use. And make this piece of artwork your own. Whatever you decide, Klimt would be happy with. Okay. All right, so for the last step, we're going to be using our brush that is the same brush that we used for black. And we can just wipe it off for the most part. And you can dip into whatever colors you want. Um, because of the layering process and because these um, acrylics are pourable acrylics, so they're somewhat transparent, then 
you might need to stick to the dark green and the dark blue and the dark red and avoid the yellow um, just because it's going to work best. So I picked up some blue and with my tipped, my pointed brush, I'm making circles. in the center of some of my leaves. And if you'd like to, you have the choice of picking up uh, some red it's another strong color and it'll sit on top. And it'll look especially good on yellow. If you put red on top of green, look at that. What an interesting result that gives you. Colors are very interesting. When you put two colors side by side, if they're analogous, if they're side by side on a color wheel, then they have a harmonious effect. And if they are opposite each other on the uh, color wheel, then they have a very different dramatic impact. That's looking great. Again, make sure that you have your brush tipped with paint and you don't have a big club on it and you can just go to town. Great job, guys. I hope you had a great time putting together a painting based on Gustav Klimt's Tree of Life. Thanks, guys. Have a super day.